everyone. I hope you guys are having a blessed day today. Um, I just feel like doing this video. I know I've listened to a couple of David Benjamin's um, video on the whole topic of James Soon justification. You know, the whole it's really awesome. If you haven't listened to it, I really suggest you do so. Um, um, I did post some of my community posts, um, like the link there. But you can also go to his channel and, and kind of hear the video. It, it's really profound if you really think about it, you know. Now, there's something I want to talk about, though. This whole idea of justification uh, by faith. And it's so important to understand what that signifies for us. But we're going to use the Bible to define it, okay? Because like I said, if all else fails and people want to argue, just take them to Scripture, you know? Let them go argue with God and not you. Uh, but before we begin, we're going to talk about the gospel. It is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And summarized that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to Scriptures, was buried, and on the third day rose again for our justification. Jesus always existed. He is the second person of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Jesus left heaven, was born of a virgin, lived a perfect life, never sinned, and shed his precious blood on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of all our sins, past, present, and future. What God commands is that we believe this testimony concerning his Son, Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of all our sins, and to be reconciled back to God and to receive eternal life. Okay? Um, so, it is something that you must do to be saved. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Trust that Jesus Christ, what he accomplished on the cross, he did it for you, okay? It's just that simple. It really is not that difficult, you know? It's funny to me how people say, oh, I don't want to believe that, but you rather believe that a man came from ape because someone told you that. But you say, I don't, I don't believe what man wrote, or oh, man wrote the Bible, I don't believe it, but you want to write, you want to listen to Charles Darwin, which is a man, a flawed man, by the way, okay, who later recanted his own statement that the scientific community refused to, to change because they already sold the lie and they were not about to take it back, you know? So again, all I'm saying is, it's funny how people are quick to, you know, this the Bible, but then they believe every hogwash that is put out there by man. And yet they diss the man who wrote the Bible. I mean, come on, people. Either you believe the word of God or you don't, but I'm here to tell you there is a, a time of reckoning coming, okay? And it's called a tribulation. You don't want to be here for that. Trust me. If you think things is hard right now, you have no idea. This is like, this is cakewalk. What we are witnessing in our society today is nothing but just <laughs> cake and ice cream right now, okay? You see, we don't even know what evil is. We think we do, but we really don't know, you see? Because the Holy Spirit is restraining. And because the Holy Spirit is restraining, what we're seeing is a trickle of what it looks like. But that's not it. When the Holy Spirit stops restraining evil, which means the church is out of here in a rapture, the world will know what true evil looks like. You know, And it's going to be the most scariest time on the planet Earth. I'm telling you right now, you know, God has made it so simple. He did not complicate the gospel. He made it so simple. He did everything for you, and he's offered it freely, and all you have to do is simply believe and receive it. That's it. That's what he asked for, okay? Now, many people use that, and then they say, okay, yeah, well, once you believe the gospel, now you're saved. Now, back to the works of the law for your Christian life, and that is wrong. This is why we talk about the whole topic of justification. It's so important. When you understand how you were justified and you're standing before God, then you realize that standing does not only apply because you believe the gospel, but for your Christian life. That's how you approach God in justification because he deemed you righteous. And because you're deemed righteous, you can approach him boldly. Even when you commit sin and do so, you ain't got no business doing, you can still approach him boldly. Why? Because you know you're not about to get your head, you know, chopped off by God. No, you know, the Holy Spirit points you to your identity and who you are and reminds you that this person you're acting like, that's not you. That's it. That's a, that's a dead flesh. This is the new you right here. This is who you are. He points you to your identity in Christ. And because of that, you have confidence to approach God. But if you know that someone is about to, you know, pretty much, you know, rip you one, you'll be afraid to go to them. The Bible tells you in Hebrews, you know, to come boldly before the throne of God. You can't come boldly if you're not standing in justification. 
Because when you stand in justification and understand what that means for your Christian life, then you know that you have confidence to approach God. But if you don't understand that and you think it has to do with works, you're going to be like a hamster in a wheel just spinning and always afraid to come to God. How do I know that? Because I was one of those people, you know, before I understood grace and even salvation, what it actually entails and justification, all of that, you know. For over a decade, I literally was under law, lordship, and Calvinism. I was all in all of it, okay? All that mixture. And I thought I was doing something, and I was so depressed. Because it feels like you are just, this. no matter how much you do, it's never enough. There's no limitation as, okay, you, you've done enough. It's like you keep doing, and it's never enough, because God is not happy, and that's what you keep getting but that's all false because again having a, a false sense of justification creates that and unfortunately a lot of pastors they don't teach the truth about justification they only tell you justification is just for you to get to heaven and that's it but then the rest of your christian life you got to get to work and, and when you bring up the thief on the cross they say well he died so he didn't have to worry about that i mean do you see what i'm saying but here paul was giving the message to bring clarity to the gospel and what and uh, and and how we approach God and our standing with Him, what that looks like, okay? But let's read this real quick because I don't want to make a long video. We're gonna read Romans three. We're gonna start with verse twenty-one. So let's hear what justified by faith looks like. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. So first, talk about the righteousness of God now. Before I get there, let me go back to Genesis. You know, something I realized. During creation, when God created man, right? He said, and it was good. Man, God said that it was good. And when God declared something good, he meant it was perfect in his eyes, which means righteous. Okay? Perfect, righteous means no flaws. Okay? None. That's what good is. So when you talk about good, God is one that defines what good is and what good is not. Okay? So when man says, this is why when that <laughs> the guy that called Jesus, good, good teacher, and Jesus asked him, why do you call me good? Only God is good. Why would Jesus even st stop him there? Because you're trying to speak on man and God is telling you there is none good according to God's standard. Right now, there is none. Why? Because sin has entered. And there's the fall of man. So therefore, what was initially good is no longer considered good by God. Okay? Even to the point where he relented. He said that he repented. Okay? <laughs> from making man. Well... Maybe not repent is the word, but I can't remember exactly. But he was angry, you know, because of what took place, even though he knew it was going to happen, you know, during Genesis, you know, during the flood, right? He said he regretted even created man, you know, created man. But guess what? He had a plan already in place for that, you know? So I know people say, well, why would God even have a bad an eye on that if he already knows all things? That's not the point. The point is, just because you know all things, and when you watch it happen, transpire in real time, it still will upset you because God has emotions. People act like God, you know, is just, it's taught you. He has emotions. You have emotions, you know. Where do you think your emotions come from? You know, God made man in his, in his image and likeness. Think about that, you know. When you have feelings, you have emotions, so does God, you know. But his emotion is not like ours, you know what I'm saying? Ours is a flawed version of it, you know? His is the perfect, you know, emotion. When God is angry about something, it is justified. You know, sometimes we're just mad about something because we feel like being mad today, okay? Or we want to get even at somebody. So, you know what I mean? So we can never compare ourselves to God's, you know, standard at all, ever, okay? Now, with that being said, God did say this, though. Think about it. When man was created... And God said that, that, that it, it was good. God was satisfied with man, right, initially. So man was good. Now, here's the thing. The tree of knowledge of good and evil was in a garden. 
So it's the tree of life. But what people just read past that, and let me think, tell you something that's really awesome. Man did not know good nor evil. They just knew life. You see what I'm saying? Oh, what do you mean? Well, because think about it. The tree of knowledge of good and evil was a corrupt tree. He said, do not eat of that one. So the knowledge of good and the knowledge of evil is like two-sided coin in this one tree. If you eat the fruit of this tree, you obviously, we see the fall take place. Because now man gets to know what good is and what's evil, but is a warped version of it. You see what I'm saying? We didn't get the righteousness version of good because only God is what declares something good. Okay? So when God said that the tree is of good and evil, tree of not knowledge of good and evil means to know good and evil means we can say something is good or, you know what I mean, we, we can ourselves say this is good or this is evil. That's the whole thing about conscience, right? Where your conscience, you know, people say, well, well, the law wasn't given to the Gentiles. Yeah, it wasn't. But at the same time, <laughs> when you're doing things that was under the law, if you don't know God, you still judge by it. Why? Because your conscience, you know good and evil. That's the thing. All that came right from the garden, okay? I make that point because sometimes people will try to make it seem like, you know, hey, you know, man will, will just create, and then God just gets to choose who's good and who's not and who will be saved and who won't who be saved. That's not it. It tells you exactly how the fall of man came, and this applies to everybody except Christ. Okay? This is why in Isaiah and also in Romans, you can hear God say there is none good, there is none righteous. Why would he say that if he already declared man good in the beginning? Because when sin entered, the man knew the, the had in the fruit of knowledge of good and evil, they became corrupted. Okay? They became corrupted. Now, the flip side of that is that even though they became corrupted and inherently evil, man can also be good. But that good will only come when God is the one declares you justified. You see what I'm saying? So even though there's two sides of that coin, there's also a good that comes out of that. And that is true the gospel. So when a man believes the gospel, there is something good that happens to that person. A new spirit. A new man. The righteousness of God, that's good. That's what's there. Do you still do evil on your flesh? Yes, you do. Because sin is considered evil, whether you like it or not. And you know, and you know for a fact when you do something wrong, you can't pretend and be like, huh, what? I didn't understand that. Now, so, some things we might not know because it's, you know, something that's out of our own, um, you know, control as in mind. But when you perform an action, any evil action you commit or a word you say, you are full aware of it. We're not going to play games, okay? So, I say that so you understand how justification is so important. You want God to justify you. You don't want to stand before man, talk about, you know, oh, man, man cannot justify you. Man cannot justify you. This is why they, you know, I used to believe that whole thing with James, you know, oh, it just means, you know, it just justifies as a man. No, but then when he really started thinking about it, a man cannot justify another man. No, only God can justify because God is the only one who declares something to be justified means good and perfect. Okay? If God doesn't say it is, then it's not. And we know the only way you can be good and perfect in God's eyes is through believing the gospel. To be born again. It's that simple. So now we can read, okay? But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned. All means all, guys. And come short of the glory of God. That means all. Now look at this now. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God had set forth to be a propitiation 
through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just. Here it is, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. So, here we know that God is the one who justifies us. He is the justifier of him who believeth in Jesus Christ. So when you come to God, you stand in justification because he justified you already. Okay? You're not coming to God in your own name. You come in the name of Christ. Because you have a seal on you now. The Holy Spirit. Remember Ephesians 1? Okay? You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. As your earnings of inheritance, right? So guys... This is so vital. Your Christian life is about knowing and understanding who you are and the way God sees you and how to approach him. If you don't know how to approach God, how can you be confident? This is why people are in fear and cowering and shameful in the eyes of God. Woe is me, woe is me. No, woe is not you. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That is what he said. Because he declared you righteous. He justified you. And because he justified you, that made you righteous. So you cannot go around, you know, denying what you already have. Because someone on the pulpit told you you don't have it. This is kind of like the same thing that was in the garden. They had everything. And yet, the serpent beguiled the woman, Eve, lying to get you to question and sow in doubt, to question God on what he already said that is true about you. Many are doing the exact same thing today, and they have different names for it. Progressive sanctification. If you do not confess your sins, you know, before God, let's go do business with God. If you don't confess it, then, you know, hey, you're going to, you know, you know, God is mad at you. And I mean, come on, people. You can't approach him unless you ask for forgiveness first. Wait a minute. Are you forgiven or not? Which one did God... Uh, so so according to these people, God only forgave you until you sin again. Is in an all... Is all all. Wasn't all all. Or, I mean, did the Bible say some? No, it says all of it. You will... You, my goodness, guys. You will wash. You will just be sanctified by the Spirit of God. How much clearer does it get? And yet people fight over this. Because they want to have total control over you instead of you having the freedom in Christ. You rather be a slave to man in the name of being humble. No, you need to stand firm in your faith in Christ Jesus. Okay? Please remember, we all receive this as a free gift, and you have to walk in the same manner you received Him by faith. You don't become a Christian by faith and now your Christian life, which, by the way, the entire the Christian life all of a sudden becomes works. No. Paul even said, by the deeds of the Lord shall no f- flesh be justified in his sight. So you think that, you know, if I do A, B, C, then God is going to be happy. If you're already justified as a believer, then you're already justified and that only comes by faith. He doesn't say, Okay, there's two different justifications. Now I just find you by faith for heaven. I'm going to justify you by works. No, there's never going to be a justification by works, ever. Ever. No flesh shall be justified in his sight. Never by works, ever. This is why we walk by faith and not by sight. And it's impossible to please God without faith. Again, how do you please God? By walking by faith. How do you grieve the Spirit? By, you know, going back to the works of the law. That's how you grieve the Spirit. Because you're not walking in the newness of life, in your new identity. Instead, you think you can earn God's favor by doing something, performing a task, doing A, B, C, D, and keeping counts or keeping tabs so that someone can measure and say, oh, what a wonderful Christian you are. That is not it, guys. Please stop this foolishness. Get to know the Lord and stand in your justification because that's who you are. That's how he sees you as a son, a child of God, not a slave. You guys have a blessed day. Peace. Love you all.